Okay, this program is called uh, PF Track 4.0. It's uh, used for Match Move, and uh, it's uh, Match Move is uh, used to set up an environment that you can use in a 3D uh, in 3D software to help create uh, CGI, and uh, it sets up that environment based off of video feed. There's a lot more stuff you can do with this program, but that's what we're going to go through um, in this video. All right, first thing you want to do this, as you see, is uh, this is when you open PF Track. This is your default <coughs> settings. Everything you see here is pretty much what it'll look like uh, when you run the program. Uh, first thing you want to do is create a new project and. Uh, Type in a project name and choose the path that you want to save it to. Hit OK. I'm going to overwrite since I've already done this before. And uh, next thing you want to do is import your footage, the video footage that you're going to use. You can uh, click this import footage button or you can just hit Control I. Use your browser tree and go to the folder that you have your video footage saved in. This is a small clip I took last night, 720 by 480, uh, 29 frames per second. I did it with my camera and uh, saved it as an ABI file into this folder. I'm going to load this video footage. And uh, right now it's 30 frames. It's, uh, it's a 30 second clip at 30 frames a second. So I'm running at 900 frames. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go to about 400 frames, cut this down a little bit, and uh, set that as my out point, and then uh, reset the horizontal range. Now, the footage I'm using only has 400 frames in it. So I have my frame uh, footage set up. As you'll notice in in the uh, in the footage that I recorded. I got these little markers that I put on the desk. All there is, all those are just little white pieces of paper, and uh, um, it's not necessary. But um, for the sake of this tutorial, it's going to help uh, uh, with the tracking and solving process. Uh, without those markers, um, as you'll notice when we start to track, it picks up on uh, uh, different points in the scene and uses that information. So hopefully it'll pick up on those four markers and track it on out. Uh, once you have your video footage loaded, come up here to um, Auto Track. Now you can do Track and Solve, but there's something I want to show you that will help the process out a lot. So we're going to do Track first. And uh, because I have Camtasia running my uh, recording program to record the tutorial, I'm just going to pause Camtasia and let it track itself on out. But if you look down here, it'll track all the way to the end, to the frame 400, and then it'll track itself back. So I'm going to pause it until it does that. Okay. Um, just about complete tracking. Alright, my tracking is complete. Um, as you'll notice, you have a bunch of little X's here, and as you scroll through it, uh, green, you have most of them green, or hopefully most of them are green. You want to try to avoid red stuff. Uh, red things are bad. It confuses the computer, and uh, it confuses uh, how it's going to solve it. So go to a point in your video clip uh, where you have the most red, and what you can do is, let's see. Let's see, I have a couple red here, and here, and here, and here, and here, or whatever. Uh, what you can do is come to uh, clean tracks and uh, turn this down a little bit. Right here, your tracking threshold, and uh, turn it down a little bit. And uh, as you'll see, as I turn it down a lot of those reds disappear and then I can close that and hopefully you still have all your green tracks all right. 
Uh, next thing you want to do, it's not absolutely necessary that you do this, but it will help um, the program solve your footage. Go to camera, estimate focal length, you'll have a box appear up here. You want to set this box up to something on the scene. Now, <laughs> this could get a little complicated. Just about there. Okay. Now I have my box set up. What I did, I put it over the top of my little markers. You can set it up against something square, set it on a plane. As you can see, my uh, grid lines pretty much match up with the desk, and that's what I was going for. This doesn't have to be precise, but it. Uh, it helps uh, the computer uh, try to determine your focal point of your camera. Um, next thing you want to do is go ahead and solve it. So you hit solve. It's the one with the dots by itself. Everything can stay the same on this one. On this pop up and then hit start. Um, this was only going to go one way, but uh, still, it's going to take a little bit of time, so I'm going to pause the video again. Okay, now that that's done, uh, you'll notice that I put some points in here on top of my uh, markers that I had set up on the desk, and uh, basically this helps uh, solve the uh, footage as well so after your solve is complete what you can do is uh, click click on one of these green points on your scene and then uh, right click it set and uh, go set as origin and it should set your plane up and what you're looking for as you scroll through the plane should stick so I mean if that makes any sense right now this looks like a, a pretty good solve because uh, the plane is stuck to the desk basically so I'm going to go uh, good with that what you want to do is uh, after you do your camera solve come up here and do improve solution and it should help you out a little bit. If for some reason your camera doesn't stick, uh, what you can do is uh, come back to camera, delete solution, go to tracking, and try to get rid of a couple more of those red marks by uh, clean, uh, going to clean tracks and uh, lowering um, or, or optimizing your footage optimizing your tracks so I'm satisfied with this uh, as it is so I'm gonna go ahead and export my um, my scene and save it under as a max script so I come down here to uh, 3d they got different types of tracking I'm gonna go through uh, to 3d uh, right click on 3D hit new and uh, my scene export uh, window pops up as you can see it's going to 3D Studio Max there's a bunch of different options here Adobe After Effects, uh, Blender, uh, Lightwave, Maya uh, and uh, Soft Image so I got a, I got a, a message from someone earlier on uh, YouTube
wondering if you could do some stuff like this in soft image well you can so I'm going to go ahead and go back to uh, 3ds max script and uh, what I'm going to do is actually you know what I'm gonna do I just want to export these four features instead of exporting everything which you can do you can export everything but I'm going to tag each one of these four features tag for export tag for export and tag for export right click new max and tagged features so you can tag every 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 point that's on there can be exported but I'm going to go and export just the tagged features um, scale is going to be one and uh, this is the folder where it's exported to and hit OK and that's it for now uh, once you uh, once you open your 3D uh, program, then you uh, run your script from that location, and uh, that'll be another tutorial. Thanks for your time.